Pokemon generations often like to include hints or references to upcoming generations that haven't been revealed yet, and sometimes Game Freak will even look to older generations for inspiration while developing the new ones. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at 20 things in newer Pokemon generations that actually first appeared in older ones. Now that we're in 2024, many of us are setting goals that we want to achieve this year, and today's sponsor, BetterHelp, can help with that. Whether you want to work towards a better job, want to manage stress or anxiety better, or just want to feel better in general, BetterHelp can help you work towards those goals with a therapy system that can be there for you in whatever way works best for you. With BetterHelp, you can have therapy sessions as a phone call, a video chat, or even just with standard messaging, so you can talk to someone in a way that feels most natural and comfortable. BetterHelp also has over 30,000 therapists in their network that they can match you with based on your preferences, needs, and your location, which gives you access to a much wider range of expertise than may be available to you locally. All you have to do is fill out a quick questionnaire at betterhelp.com slash hhh, and then you can schedule sessions at a time that works for you. And if you don't feel like the therapist you were matched up with is working, you can simply switch with the click of a button at no additional cost. So if that sounds like something that could benefit you, you can go to betterhelp.com slash hhh with the link in the description below. And not only does that support the channel as well, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. So give that a look and a big thank you to BetterHelp for supporting the channel. Alright, let's go ahead and start things off with something in Gen 2 that likely inspired something in Gen 6. In Gen 6, we of course got the introduction of Mega Evolution, and one of those Mega Evolutions is Mega Gyarados. Mega Gyarados looks almost identical to a mystery Pokemon that Misty sees in a dream in the anime, in the episode Enlighten Up. So it's very possible that this mystery mon inspired the design of Mega Gyarados, especially because we know that Misty has an affinity for Gyarados as well. There's also another potential Mega Evolution connection that can be found in Gen 2 as well. In Charizard's Pokemon Gold Dex entry, it says, If Charizard becomes furious, the flame at the tip of its tail flares up into a whitish blue color. This describes Mega Charizard X perfectly, as not only does it have that whitish blue flame on its tail and is the only type of Charizard who does, but the mention of it becoming furious also fits perfectly here too, since we know that many Mega Evolutions become extremely agitated and angry upon Mega Evolving. So it's very possible that this Dex entry directly inspired the design of Mega Charizard X that was introduced over a decade after this Dex entry was written. There are actually a lot of these kinds of things that connect to X and Y, so let's look at a couple more. First is the most infamous one, and that is the Strange Souvenir. Given to you by a hiker in the Kalos games, this item is a direct hint to Pokemon Sun and Moon, which would be released three years after Pokemon X and Y, and more specifically, it is most likely a direct tease towards the island guardians Tapu Koko, Lele, Finny, and Bulu, as it is said to depict a guardian deity of the Alola region. This next one is a bit more theoretical, but there is a lot of evidence to suggest that Professor Sycamore is actually one of Professor Rowan's aides that we see in the Sinnoh games, particularly the one that is the father of the opposite player character to the one you choose. This is because we know that Professor Sycamore studied under Professor Rowan thanks to an NPC in X and Y, 
The aide that is the father of the player, even though it's just an NPC model, doesn't look too dissimilar to Professor Sycamore, and most of all, Lucas, one of his children, depending on who you play as, wears a beret in the games, which is a hat of French origin. This idea was even strengthened in Pokemon Legends Arceus, when we see Rei at the beginning of the game wearing a shirt that originates from the Kalos region in Pokemon X and Y. So it might sound crazy, but this aid from Gen 4 could have very possibly became Professor Sycamore a couple generations later in Gen 6. Another one that's a bit circumstantial, yet compelling in X and Y, occurs with an NPC who says that riding on an onyx would be so much fun. And wouldn't you know it, just one generation later in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, onyx became a rideable Pokemon. Ride Pokemon also began to become a thing in X and Y, so it's also possible that Onyx was on Game Freak's radar as a Ride Pokemon in Gen 6 that they were finally able to make happen at the end of Gen 7 in the Let's Go games. Speaking of the Let's Go games, there are multiple allusions to them in the Alola games that came prior to them. The first is right on the back of the box art of Ultra Sun and Moon, where it says in big bright letters, Let's Go. Given that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee would come out just one year after Ultra Sun and Moon, and there's also an additional Let's Go hint in these games as well, it's very likely that this too is an intentional hint to the Let's Go titles. And that additional hint comes right at the beginning of Ultra Sun and Moon, where in the player's bedroom, an autograph can be found sitting on top of a drawer that says it's from a gym leader in Kanto when it's interacted with. And in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you get an autograph just like this from Lieutenant Surge after defeating him in battle, revealing who the autograph actually came from and that it was a tease to the Let's Go games all along. Also in Ultra Sun and Moon, a poster of Gigantamax Toxtricity can be seen out in the open for everyone to see on the wall of the Game Freak offices in Heia Heia City. Due to its low resolution and the angle that we can view it from, it made it almost impossible at the time to know that this was an actual new Pokemon from the upcoming generation, making it a very good hint. Another hint to Sword and Shield in the Alola games comes from an NPC trainer on Pony Island, who asks you if the area you're in seems like a power spot, which is the name of the areas in Sword and Shield where you are able to Dynamax your Pokemon. This NPC is also a sightseer, aka a tourist, meaning that this NPC is likely meant to be from the Gala region directly. Another Alola illusion that's not really a hint, but more like an inspiration from an earlier generation like the first couple entries, has to do with Alolan Executor. Alolan Executor is essentially alluded to four generations before it was introduced in Gen 3, where its dex entry in the Hoenn games mentions that Executor originally came from the tropics, and that its heads grow larger with exposure to strong sunlight, which perfectly describes Alolan Executor and its long neck. We can even see an Executor with a long neck in Generation 1, via the jungle expansion of the TCG, showing that its Alolan form is actually likely inspired by all these things from multiple generations earlier. Meanwhile, in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, a huge tease to the Gala region was made in the episode Bright Light's Big Changes, where Ash is watching a TV program, and in the background of the program, an area very clearly resembling London can be seen which obviously alludes to the UK-based Galar region, which would be revealed not too long after this in Generation 8. 
Yet another hint to Gen 8 in the Gen 7 timeframe comes from the TCG. In the Cosmic Eclipse expansion, there is a Teddy Ursa card that, when you look at it in retrospect, is a huge tease to Pokemon Legends Arceus. The card features a statue of Arceus in the background, in an area that perfectly resembles the Celestica Ruins, and Teddy Ursa received a new evolution in Pokemon Legends Arceus in the form of Ursa Luna, meaning that this card practically screamed at us that Legends Arceus was coming, and we had no idea until Legends was already revealed. And speaking of Gen 8, there is, as you might expect by now, a hint to Gen 9 within this generation as well. In the Sir Chester Hotel in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there are roped off rooms on either side of the lobby that feature wallpaper with grapes and oranges, which we now know is a direct connection to Naranja and Uva Academies from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, especially because the Sir Chester Hotel is the hotel within the games that members of Game Freak are staying in. Going back to the TCG, another TCG hint that is really just a fun little tidbit more than an actual thing or piece of inspiration, but it's still kinda cool, comes from the Fossil expansion in Generation 1. In this Psyduck card, a red fish can be seen jumping up out of the water in the background, and say what you will, but it pretty closely resembles Tatsugiri's droopy form from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, I don't think this is an example of inspiration being taken or anything like that, it's kinda just a fun coincidence more than anything, but the resemblance is pretty uncanny if I do say so myself. I've got one more Alola-related one for you guys, and it's a pretty crazy one that has to do with the third Pokemon movie, Spell of the Unknown, which released all the way back in Generation 2. At the beginning of the movie, Molly's dad is showing her a book of legendary Pokemon, with one of the pages depicting a Pokemon that resembles the sun and is shining its light over a tropical beach location, with some hibiscus flowers prominently displayed in the foreground. This, shockingly enough, connects perfectly to Solgaleo from five generations later in Pokemon Sun and Moon, as not only is it a legendary Pokemon like the book depicts, but it is of course based around the sun, is from the tropical Alola region which is consistent with the setting in the book, and Alola is based on Hawaii, whose state flower is the hibiscus, which is the flower that is depicted in the book. So, given all of these very strong connections, it's very possible that this could have played some sort of role in Solgaleo's development as a Pokemon. Okay, now we're gonna get into some Gen 5 stuff, because Gen 5 has been all the rage lately. In the Hoenn games, there is a researcher at the Devon Corporation who says he's working on a device to visualize the dreams of Pokemon. Pokemon dreams and their visualization would later be explored a couple of generations later in Gen 5's Dream World, and this connection was even legitimized in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, when this same researcher mentions that his rival, who lives far away, is also working on the same thing, which obviously connects to Unova, and more specifically Fennel, and her research into the dreams of Pokemon. Gen 5 has a bunch of connections of its own, though, to future generations as well. Like, for instance, Gen 6 and Mega Evolution. Colrus is a character from Gen 5 who was introduced in Black and White 2. And his character in Black and White 2 is basically just one big allusion to Mega Evolution, which would come just a year later in Pokemon X and Y at the time of Black and White 2's release. During one of the first times you encounter Colrus in the games, he introduces himself by saying the following, Oh, excuse me, I am a scientist. My name is Colrus. The theme of my research is bringing out the power of Pokemon. Bringing out the power of Pokemon. Is it possible to bring out their maximum power through the bond they share with their trainers? 
This pretty accurately describes the concept of Mega Evolution, which relies on the bond between Trainer and Pokemon. And since it directly followed Black 2 and White 2 where this statement was made, this was possibly an intentional hint at what was to come. Especially because in Pokemon X and Y, it is mentioned by an NPC that Colrus has visited Kalos before. We also know that Black 2 and White 2 take place at the same time as Pokemon X and Y, thanks to a developer at Game Freak, meaning that all of this is likely connected, and this was likely an intentional piece of foreshadowing. These next few are still a bit of a developing story, so we'll have to wait and see what ultimately happens when it's all said and done, but given all of the connections between the Gen 5 games and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they are very compelling. The first is that it seems to be the case that a mask from the Festival of Masks could potentially be displayed in the Nacreen City Museum in Pokemon Black and White. There is a mask on display here that says that it was once used in festivals, which perfectly describes the Festival of Masks from the Teal Mask DLC in Scarlet and Violet. And given all the other strong connections between these two generations, it's possible that this could have been used as a point of inspiration for the DLC and in order to connect the two generations together, given all of the crossover that they currently have and could potentially have if the highly rumored upcoming new Unova game actually comes to fruition later in this generation. Another thing from the Black and White games that seems like it is very much being used as a connection to Gen 9 is the presence of possible Terra Crystals in Gen 5. We can see in the Unova games that there are crystals throughout Driftvale City that, in terms of shape, almost identically resemble the Terra Crystals from Scarlet and Violet. It's also interesting that these are in Driftvale, considering that Clay, the gym leader of Driftvale City, has a daughter named Lacey who appears in Scarlet and Violet at the Blueberry Academy. Again, we will just have to wait and see how this one potentially continues to develop with the next games to know how big of a connection this truly is or isn't, but as of right now, it's still pretty cool. This next Unova one is really cool, and it comes courtesy of an observation made by Tube and his viewers, so shout out to them. In the Nacreen City Gym in Pokemon Black and White, the gym's puzzle takes place in a library, and in that library, on top of one of the bookshelves, a scarlet and violet colored book can be seen sitting next to each other, which very much resemble the scarlet and violet books from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, I don't think this is a hint or anything like that to Scarlet and Violet, but given all of the other extreme connections that there are between Black and White and Scarlet and Violet, which I've talked about here and in multiple other videos as well, I don't necessarily believe that this is just a coincidence either. I feel like Game Freak has taken a good hard look at the Unova games and has used a ton of content within them to inspire stuff and connect to stuff within Scarlet and Violet. Does that ultimately culminate in a new Unova game being released in Gen 9 alongside Scarlet and Violet? We will have to wait and see, but the connections between these two generations, for one reason or another, are definitely very strong regardless. And those were the 20 things that I had to share with you in this video, but I've also got one more bonus one for you to do with what you will. This is a speculative, potential connection from Scarlet and Violet to the Generation 10 game. And obviously, we have no idea what's coming for Gen 10 yet, so this can't be counted as being legit at all, but I think it's worth throwing in there for some discussion. In the Indigo Disc DLC, there is a map that appears in the classrooms at Blueberry Academy, and it also appeared in the reveal trailer for the Indigo Disc. The map seems to depict part of a region, and it also doesn't seem to resemble anywhere in the terrarium at Blueberry Academy but it does actually resemble a map of the Netherlands just a bit, specifically the southern end of the country. 
Now, the Netherlands seems kinda random as a possible upcoming region, but it does sit right next to the UK, France, and Spain all of which have Pokemon regions of their own. So it might not be as far-fetched as it might seem at first glance for the Netherlands to get a Pokemon region. I'm not personally convinced of this or anything like that as an actual hint. I think we're ultimately just gonna have to wait and see what happens, but it is still interesting. I'll give it that. So I think it's at least worth a shout out and some discussion. If you guys enjoyed this video though, be sure to leave a like and let me know all your thoughts down below. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet for more Pokemon content all the time. And with that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon. Until then, as always, thanks so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. And I will smell you guys later.